What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I do work here lady. Alright, this story's called, I like to call this one, I might be young, but I'm the assistant manager. I'm sorry, that's assistant two. Uh, this is a story from a while back. Three years to be exact, but I need to share it. Just some info, I'm 23 male, so have any of you had this odd experience where you are a hard worker doing your best, valued by your district and regional managers, but you're your co-workers and store staff absolutely hate you? Ah, we have a brown noser. I'm kidding, guys. It's a joke. Whenever you replace someone in another store, things are great, but you come back and it's all crap? Well, that was me when I worked at Starbucks four years ago. Long story short, after a whole year of that nonsense, I presented a resignation letter, which prompted one of the higher ups to call me asking me why I wanted to leave. I explained the toxic work environment and he offered to transfer me to another store as an assistant manager. As you may guess, the raise in payment was more than enough to encourage a 20 year old. But to the matter at hand, here's the actors. There's me, Hopi, Karen, cashier, manager. This story takes place around three weeks after after I started on my new position. Things were going good. I was struggling a bit with the whole inventory side of things, but logistics and scheduling were great. Since I was still learning, I wasn't supposed to be left alone. But the store manager, three times female, I don't know what that means, had an issue and had to leave for a while. I told her I would handle it. Everything went well. Staff that day were all pros. Honestly, one of the baristas, cashier, working that day, was probably more qualified than me to actually manage. So I decided to take my break and as I usually did, I went to the dressing room, took my shirt and apron off and sat by the window. A small corner with a couch and lovely vista drinking a coffee and eating whatever had spoiled. I'm sitting happily there and suddenly a streak of poorly done blonde dyed hair invades my space and screeches. Excuse me, I need you to move out of the seat, child. I have business to attend. She was carrying a laptop. Oh, you probably want to go upstairs. The reception sucks in this little corner. I knew this for a fact. And there are more plugs so you can connect your charger. Now I need this spot. Move or I'll tell manager. I'm a regular. That made me raise an eyebrow. I had never seen her before. So you know manager. Well, I'm sorry but she isn't here right now. Besides, I was just trying to help, but if you think you'll manage, sure, have the seat. I stood up and left, heading to the back room to finish my rest. A few minutes passed by when I suddenly hear a screech, and not five seconds later, cashier pops her head in. OP, sorry to bother, but there's a crazy lady here. Can you handle her? The blonde dyed one? Sure, let's go. We head there, and in fact, it was Karen, screaming out of the top of her lungs for manager. I'm sorry, ma'am. As I told you before, manager isn't here right now. I'm taking her duties until she comes back. What's the problem? You, the manager? Don't make me laugh. Where's manager? Miss, manager isn't here. She had to leave for personal issues. She'll be back in a... That's how far I got. Where is she? I'll have you fired over this... I I couldn't connect to my reunion and now you are acting instead of your boss? Ma'am, I'm the assistant manager and I told you that place had a poor connection. Stop lying! When manager comes back, I'll make sure you lose your job, new guy! She huffed and puffed back into her corner. Customers in the line all looking at us like, whatever? So an hour or so passes by and manager comes back, visibly to she apologized to us for running late and was about to start explaining what happened when Karen comes barging into the back room. Manager, you finally arrived. You wouldn't believe how that kid treated me. You should fire him. He insulted me in 
acted like if he was in charge and didn't let me connect to the Wi-Fi. My assistant manager? Long pause. Like, awkward, long silence pause. Look, Karen, just because you are my mom's best friend doesn't mean you can come here and treat my staff however you please. Get out of the back room. Karen, without a hint of shame. Well, at least I want a refund while trying to connect my coffee got all cold. LP, did I teach you how to issue refunds? Come with me. We head to the cashier and manager shows me through the steps. She had already done in the past. Yeah, she was just making sure I remembered, but then I got an idea. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, manager, but I did warn Karen that the reception sucked at that spot and she chose to sit there anyway. Not to mention the scene she caused later. I don't think she's entitled to a refund. That's a lie! I would never raise my voice! She said, screaming once again. Is that so? Cashier? In all her glorious pro barista stoner girl aura, muttered the most amazing yet calm accusation while not even lifting her eyes from the coffee she was working on. I mean, yeah. She was screaming like for 10 minutes. Even got my ears hurting. She's crazy. If you had heard it, the delivery, something I can't express in written form. Well, Karen, I sadly can't offer you a refund. But, but? Sorry, Karen. See you another day. Karen left angry, fuming, screaming at the poor customer service and how manager's mom would hear about it. Sorry about that. She's my mother's neighbor. Ever since she found out I work as a manager here, she comes and always causes a scene. After that, we all had our laugh. The day went as usual. Another Karen had been stopped. Um, extra info. This was a very small store. Usually five people working the positions. Very quiet place with some office buildings. Nothing crazy. I'm also aware that Starbucks leadership structures vary wildly from country to country. So while my contract said assistant manager in practice, I was more of a supervisor and I no longer work for Starbucks. Honestly, I hate the company, but the pay was really good for an entry level job. Plus it being my first contractual work was good on the resume. So I sold my soul for three years. It wasn't fun, but after the horrid first year, the rest was bearable. Anyway, that's all. Hope you liked my little tale. I too realized some people were struggling with three times. Oh, 30 somethings. But I love the three women in a trench coat idea. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, so uh, she was a 30 something year old woman. Who was it though? Who was the 30 something? I don't remember. Store manager lady. She was a 30 something year old female. Karen lady was cuckoo though. Also, OP, pretty cool being assistant to the regional manager. Um, in your like early 20s, pretty badass. Not gonna lie. Yay. <laughs> All right, this story's called I'm the Bank President, Jackass. <laughs> this was back in the 70s when I was in the military. I was stationed outside Little Rock, Arkansas, and found I was in need of extra cash. So I got a job at a security company working overnight. Our cast of characters are me, obviously, first suspect, second suspect, police officer one, police officer two. There were three of us who worked security at a prominent downtown bank. One for day shift, one for swing shift, and one for overnight shift. Yo, what's a swing shift? That sounds badass. I was the swing shift guard. Hell yeah! I'm so, I'm so happy. I hope they play Frank Sinatra. On the job, we had time clocks we had to punch in on different areas showing we were patrolling. There were one revolver for the three of us, and I found out it was, it wasn't in working order. Not only dirty and plugged up barrel, but the cylinder wouldn't rotate. But it didn't matter, for the ammo inside had turned green, making it unusable. That's disgusting. <laughs> what? So, it was my third night. I had just taken over from the older daylight guard, and I started making my rounds with my privately owned weapon and cleaning the duty weapon between patrols. When I finished cleaning and putting in new ammo, I carried it along with mine. The daylight guard didn't 
didn't pass any information on, and didn't write anything in the log, so I figured nothing out of the ordinary. One of the time clocks was in the main lobby behind the cashier's cage. When I entered the lobby, I noticed the vault was open, a light on, and some muffled speaking from inside. So I called for the police and proceeded to the vault with both guns in hand. Ah, guns, akimbo. Hands up and they better be empty! They put their hands up and slowly turned to me. They were in casual attire, had cash and books out, plus a good-sized hand tote next to them. What the hell do you think you're doing? Do you know who I am? It appears you're stealing money and you are a thief. You idiot! I'm Mr. Insert name, the bang president! We're doing an audit! Got identification to prove that? Now this was before lanyards, and many weren't issued IDs proving their identities or where they work. Uh, not on me. My coat is inside my office. I can go get it. Nope. You gentlemen walk out to the lobby. Sit down and keep your hands up until the police show up. You could see the anger and Suspect 1's face and Suspect 2 was shaking so hard I could have sworn the building was shaking. A minute later, two cops ran in from where the security office was. They had a key for that door. And police officer 1 asked what was going on. I told him my story, while police officer 2 went to handcuff the suspects. Dad? You recognize 1? Yeah! My father! Hey Barney, 5, you to detain the bank president? What the hell did you think? think you were doing? Uh, stopping a bank robbery? I meekly said. Spec 2 then pulled out a government ID with a badge indicating he was an auditor. He was still shaking and was so nervous he couldn't speak. The officers helped them up while I was apologizing and Suspect 1 said they had to do a night audit for apparently there was some cash missing and they were checking the books along with cash on hand to find out who who had taken the cash or just messed up in the books. Feeling stupid, I went back to my patrolling, then wrote the incident in the daily log. The next day, I found a memo for me to come to the company office, 8th floor of the bank building, and speak with the manager of the company. I thought, this is it, I'm getting chewed out and canned. To my surprise, Suspect 1 had commended me for my diligence, my observations, and the way I'd handled things. The manager gave me a pat on the back for my work. I'm sorry if this was lengthy, but I do like to be thorough in my stories. Enjoy the rest of your day. That's a badass story. Thank God he wasn't a freaking sour baby head, little baby man. <laughs> ah. Anyway, that's the kind of commendation we need, but we don't get. All right, this story's called Not Allowed in the Bakery I Work In. Greetings, fellow Redditors. I'm 18 and have worked in my hometown bakery shop since I was 60. That's badass. I think that is so cool. Hence why I said badass. It's a cute little town where everyone practically knows everyone. And there are mostly sweet old men and ladies walking their dogs or kids running around to collect stickers from the local library. Yo, what is this? A freaking town from the 80s, 70s, 50s, before the internet? <laughs> I've lived here my whole life, and though I'm looking at moving for university this year, it's still a wholesome little town. Anyway, this takes place during the Modelo pandemic, but shortly after the first initial lockdown in England, we are considered an essential business because we sell milk and bread, as well as flour at the time. We have to wear masks at our jobs, and and advise our customers to wear masks too, though we're not supposed to tell them specifically to wear one. See my profile for the fake service dog lady for the reason behind that rule. I still wasn't back at college for the time, so was asked to help out a few hours here and there with my boss and co-worker, because one employee was still furloughed for the time being. I had to say yes, and got a little extra money under my belt. However, because of our low stock at the big bakery, which 
supplied all of our food to cook and bread to sell, we didn't get a lot of sandwich fillings and often had to go to the local shop right next door in order to pick up extra butter, lettuce, etc. This one fateful day, we had run out of butter as we recently started remaking bacon baps in the morning and the builders were coming in herds. So my boss asked me to take a few pounds out of the till, go get some butter, then get the receipt and yada yada. I was used to doing this and didn't complain. I took my work apron off and threw my jacket on because man it was freezing. Got the butter, moving on. As I go to walk back into the bakery, this woman sticks out her foot by the door and stops me. I'm silently praying it's not a carrot and luckily it isn't, but she's not far off. Here's the cast. Lady. Me. Ahem. Yes. It's two customers at a time and I was here first. <laughs> For work, we have to wear black trousers and a black button up. Because we're on our feet all day, all of us wear leggings and trainers. Paired with my hoodie, I did not look like I worked there, so I understand the confusion. I know it's two people at a time. I'm just trying to- I was here first. I try going round her and she moves closer to the door. I have really bad anxiety and the virus has made me really paranoid about people being near me. I don't know. So to keep myself from panicking and to keep her unmasked self away from me, I step back. My boss hadn't noticed us as she didn't know I was back from the shops and was busy serving this mom and her screaming child as well as a builder. I gave up by this point and as the second person left, I quickly darted in and sorted my apron out again. Just in time to see the lady walk in ready to throw hands. My boss had gone to do paperwork as there were only two of us and there was a lot to do. I smirked under my mask. Hello, how can I help you today? The lady stands there for a moment, almost dumbfounded. And you guessed it, she wasn't wearing a mask. I knew she was about to throw a tantrum so I made things even better. Boss name, did you want me to deliver customers bread on the way home from work? My boss responds with a hearty, yes, please. And I turn back to finish serving the lady who leaves without so much as a word. Despite nine out of 10 of our customers being jerks, that was a good day to work in retail. I told my boss the story and we had a small laugh. She did wonder why I was standing outside with some butter. She probably saw you talking to the customer and was like, ha ha, clever individual. I don't know if it's a dude or a chick or other. Ha, clever individual who works for me. You're buttering up the customers. Genius. <laughs> All right, this story's called, Why Yes, I Do Work Here. Not a typical I do work here lady story, but it still counts. During grad school, I had a part-time job at a store in the mall. I would eat in the food court on my lunch breaks, and I usually went to one particular chicken restaurant because their lines tended to be shorter. Chick-fil-A. Several months into working there, one of the cashiers I frequently saw at the restaurant paused after I ordered and said, I see you here a Lot. Do you work in the mall? I told her yes, I work at XYZ store. She then informed me that mall employees get a discount. Totally made my day. I wish I had told someone I worked there sooner. And now you just gotta complain enough and they'll send you a check for every bit of savings you're, you're owed. And they're gonna send you a check for $30,000 and they're gonna be like, here you go, $30,000 is what you're owed. Why do you eat so much chicken? <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.